Do not envy the violence or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. And now, here's Reverend Sue. Good evening. I thank you for th good evening. I thank you for joining us this evening. You know what I I I am I am just I'm, I'm I'm speechless almost to the point where my heart is aching. My you know my whole body aches for all the things that we had to witness within the last couple of weeks. You know, thirteen people were shot in Buffalo, New York and 10 people killed. And then we had to go to Texas. All of our little babies, our little babies, our little babies and teachers were killed. Today, we have two guests, Ronald C. Willis Jr. and Therese Nelson, both are residents of uh, Buffalo, New York. And I thank them for taking the time, during this special time, just to be with us, to talk, just have a conversation about the things that are happening right as we speak in Buffalo, New York. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So when I, when I look at the 10 people killed, 13 people shot, at the only major grocery store in Buffalo, New York, Tops Friendly Market in the community. And it's interesting how God works is that both of the men are young and one is much younger than the other. So the kind of, <laughs> it's, a, it's an interest, interesting uh, pattern we here, have here. Okay. Um, so I like that. So, Arano, Aron, yes, it's my understanding that what what was your feeling? My understanding that you were on your way to to Tops Market to to you know to purchase some some items, and I, I and I would think that <laughs> I stopped you, but you tell us tell us what what happened, why you uh, did not make it to the market. I, 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 it's no self credit to myself. It's nothing I've done or anything I possess. I just, I believe in a greater power. And uh, he and I have a relationship and it's been walking with me throughout my whole life. So this is nothing different, but it just, it was something to make me wake up and say, listen to me, tune in, get, 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 get right with your creator because mm -hmm. I'm still a master. I'm still the man behind the wheel, you know? And uh, it just shows you how he guides your paths and where he can lead you. And he can save you and keep you. And my heart goes out to all the families affected and the community affected. Um, I know that community very well, born and raised there. So I know it very, very well. Uh, so it hurts to see that kind of tragedy here, where we're supposed to call home. And, and the, the youngest, the youngest person killed with 32 years of 32 years old. That mm. says so much. I mean, I'm older. That mm. says a uh, lot. The age group that was going to to go shopping, there were older people. Yeah, older people, the 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 giants and the, of in the community and and been there for like all their lives and, and contributed to the community and and children look up to them and and mm -hmm. their family members look up to them. Um, uh, Therese, um, yes. how how do you feel about that? You you young, you young, and I and. You know, ever since you've been a, probably a baby, you've been hearing the mass murder, mass murder. What, 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 you, what is, what's on your heart right now? It's honestly like surreal hearing it happen in like their own backyard, basically. I mean, I got friends that live over there, got family that lives over there. 
um, to hear that everyone that died was, besides the one lady who was 32, uh, was like older. They lived their whole lives, you know, not necessarily worrying about getting shot, going to a grocery grocery store and one day they're going shopping just to pick up regular groceries or whatever they were going to pick. And that was their last time being alive. Yeah. It really is like scary just thinking like, I can't go anywhere and like be safe. You know, you hear about shootings at right, school. Right. You hear about shootings, you know, at a grocery store now, at, at the mall. There's nowhere that like, I necessarily feel like I can go and be perfectly safe. And it's really it's sad. I mean, I, I don't, I didn't have any family that died that day, but I can only imagine like the pain of like all the younger people, like who lost their moms and their grandmothers all, all for no reason, really all because they was black and it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Yes. And, and also uh, they're, they're your family in the community. You're not, you know, not, they're your family in the community. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and grandma and now there's no grandma, grandpa, there's no grandpa. Um, Mr. Ronnie, so when you, when you thought about, you almost was a part of that, that killing and God spare you for a reason, for a reason. And you meditated on that. Will you share with us that you right now, you think about what do you, what reason you think God spare you? What, what, what do you think that God has for you to do? Uh, the, can we talk about a little bit about that? Or maybe uh, still talk about it. And I not, yes. It, yeah, I, I can it's I can expound on it. It's not a, a, a new revelation to me that I'm destined for something great or I'm here for a purpose. That, that's never been the question. Mm -hmm. It's just uh it's, it's still sharp and still. And sometimes I can get a little bullheaded and misguided, but uh <laughs> he knows how to talk to right. me. You know, you're talking to mm -hmm. a war veteran who's done done some things. And uh, sometimes I can get stuck in my ways, but uh, he finds a way to pull me back around and draw me back in and say, listen, son. And uh, I just tune in and I just say, yes, Lord, lead the way. What, what, what do you think, uh, this uh, Therese, Therese, what uh, do you think uh, social media has something to do with this, this killer, this murderer? Does it contribute um, to that? Or he was yeah. just evil? I mean, I think social media has something to do with it and just him overall being evil. I mean, I don't understand, like, in a non disrespectful way, what, what, what has gone on with you being 18 years old, feeling like you got to go to a grocery store that's miles and miles away from your home and to kill a whole bunch of people you don't even know. I mean, social media, the internet, the internet is honestly a dangerous place. And ever since that happened, I've thought about it. I mean, there's Snapchat, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. You can mm -hmm. post that and everyone can see it. They can see, you know, if you're at, if you're at school, you're at the grocery store, like it happened mm -hmm. before, you're at a mm -hmm. uh, football game or whatever, and you post on your Snapchat story or you have your location on a, on a social media, they mm -hmm. can come, they can, they can do whatever they want. They can stalk you. They can kill you. Um, social media definitely had a, I think has a big play in like a lot of stuff that's happened. And even after the events of Buffalo, I mean, I feel like, the, what happened at the church where all the um, people died there, the uh, extra shooting that just happened a couple of days ago. I think that all has an aspect to do with social media. And it's really sad, honestly. I mean, I, I was really thinking about that the other night, like how social media has effect, affected our lives, especially the younger people. I mean, I'm 21. My, I'm not going to see my whole life with social media, but a lot of the information and a lot of the news that I get is from the internet and social media but from before I had to, you know, go up and find it or read a book or whatever. So I definitely think social media has a play in it. And I definitely think, you know, mm -hmm. part of him was just, mm -hmm. just to do that to rent to innocent people. They didn't do anything wrong to that man at all. Mm -hmm. And you're 21, you're 21 years old. You, you, when you, when you were born, the, the laptop is right there ready for you to operate. You know, you, you were ready. Yeah. All the devices were right there in front of you. That's all you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But hearing you say it at 21 years old, it's dangerous. So that means that we as parents or community or our churches or organization or the school need to start teaching our children how dangerous it is and be more attentive with our children to see what they're watching as well. Um, uh, Ronnie, 
we talk about you know we the blacks dying over and over and over again and do you what when is enough is enough when is enough is enough I mean, we keep saying it they go back and they tell us to vote they tell, talk about gun control how when is enough is enough that's all i have to ask you what is it um I mean, you have to give me parameters. What is enough, though? I don't know what your extent of, is it, of enough is compared to my extent of enough. But mm-hmm. I think it, it's going to be an ongoing battle. But I believe we're awakening a lot more people than ever before because mm-hmm. of because of social media, which Ty just mentioned. He said it is, is hurting us. It's now becoming. It's, it's so fresh, it's so new. And every time it happens, you never got over the last one. You never get to get over the last time it happened. So when it happens again, you're still numb from the last time. Mm-hmm. It almost comes in place and it just feels like the norm. Mm-hmm. And that's dangerous. When we keep feeding all this negative energy and all this news out to the world, that's when it becomes dangerous because it becomes numbing. And we don't care about people anymore. We don't see each other mm-hmm. as people. So he's mm-hmm. right. It, it is dangerous. And so she meets it. So what are, what are, for you, uh, already, what, are, what are some of the things we can do with our children? I mean, what can we do? We don't have the appropriate counseling right now. All these kids, all, all, everybody, the whole community needs counseling. Right? But what I, can we do? I like to think I have a, a, a forum of constituents of other black men that I hold in high regard that I mm-hmm. consult on a regular and one thing that we've all agreed on is, you know, getting back to the basics, teaching our children how to hunt, to teaching our children how to clean a fish, you know, um, live off the land, plant. Mm-hmm. We want to get back to those things. And we're all city slickers from different states. But we know at the end, we be, our families will be able to sustain themselves. And that's mm-hmm. what we want our young ones. We teach them, get the education, be a forward thinker, but also know how to live off the land and take care of your own. Oh, very good. I know some black farmers. They would, they would, they would be happy to, to hear what you said yeah. because yeah. some people have to do invest in land. Yeah, this is a lot. Invest in land, and then yeah. what you do, black farm, and know about the, the earth. Go back to the earth, yeah. and we start growing our own food to be to be ahead of the game. That's yeah. that's a good point. I like that to teach, 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 teach them. Uh, Terrence, I was thinking a while back where back in the, maybe the 80s and the 90s, especially in the 80s. I know in Washington, D.C., there was a lot of killing going on. And um, you as a young man, both of you are young men, you said that you always, you, you're nervous. You're nervous about where you go and what you do and how people get to see you. So, uh, Therese, let, let tell me, Give us your feeling about you as a 21-year-old black man walking the street this evening. And it's not for walking. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, as, 20, as a 21-year-old man, uh, just walking down the street, having to look over my shoulder, like, you know, making sure no like I can't wear headphones. I don't know what's, who's going to pull up on me, who's going to, you know, run up on me or anything like that. Um, I mean, it sucks that, like, just because of the color of my skin, I got to be more um, vigilant. Yes, vigilant of my surroundings. I got to, you know, watch who I talk to, watch who I spread information to, because it could always, you know, get to the wrong person. It can get back mm-hmm. to me. I don't tell everyone anything about me and anything people know about me because I want them to know. You know what I mean? Um, it just sucks that like we have to live in a world like this where I have to be more visual than my other friends. I mean, I have friends of every different color. I got white friends, I got black friends, I got Hispanic friends. Mm-hmm. Loving dude. But, you know, if I was to walk, it, it's, it's crazy because like I was thinking about it if I was in the tops with my my white friend and I sucks that I watched the video and he pointed the gun at the white dude. And then he said, he was sorry. He was sorry. Cause he was white. But if it was me and my friend walking next to each other and I got shot just because of the color of my skin, he got to live. That's it's, it's a mind blowing topic really. And back to the social media thing. I mean, 
it hurts. But at the same time, I feel like it also opens up people's eyes to see like, you know, races can come together. I mean, you see all the interracial couples now, um, you know, being happy on social media or whatever. But at the same time, it also hurts. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone on a Snapchat just post a picture of a street. And I'm like, oh, I know where that's at. You know, that's it's crazy. And people my age don't think like that. So, like, I have social media, but I don't post on social media. I just watch what's going on on social media, I guess, to stay up to date. But, like, all I know is I can post, you know, a picture of, I can post a picture of the mall. I can post a picture of the street going to the mall. And people are like, oh, I know where that's at. Or, oh, you know, he's going to the mall. Let me, let me go up there, too. If I had, you know, people already out there to get me. It just, it's really mind-blowing, honestly, just thinking like that. I shouldn't have to think like that as long. Right. You should not have to think like that. You should be a 21 year old, but everywhere you go is stress. You go to school, is, you know, you go to work is stress. You want to walk in the street is stress. You in a parking lot is stress. Just as a black man, as a black man. And it's not just in, in Buffalo. It's everywhere you go. Mm. You're in you Washington. Know, I, it doesn't matter where you live as a black man is stressful. Or oh, as a black woman, as a black woman as well, and we as black people, it's stressful. So it, from a political perspective, and all the politicians are talking about it, and I'm sure there are a lot of politicians that visit uh, Buffalo, voting is, people start primary voting right now. What can, what can a politician do, or it's left up to us to do it? Mr. Ronnie, what do you think? What can politicians do? Is there, uh, um, well, first I need to, I need to see some some mandates passed down like they did for the Asian community and everybody else for the blacks now, for the African African American community. All right. We need mandates passed down. We need these hate crime hate crime laws enacted for us. The same way that it happens for everybody else. Um it, it, it's a humanity thing. It's not really a political thing. You can't mm -hmm. politically somebody into thinking like you i mean you could you could brainwash them and, and, and politics the politicians aren't smart enough to brainwash anyone not even their own selves so it's a humanity thing we have to be humans we have to stand up and be humans and say i recognize you as a a human upright walking on two feet with your own mind and in a soul inside of you that carries its own its own mission and we have to recognize that i don't care what hue your color is I don't care what who your skin is, but it's a humanity thing. And we have to teach that as bread from the cradle to the grave. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing, too, is that is, is humanity. I, I, I really like that uh, voting. I see voting, local local voting, because that's where the judges come in. And those are make, the ones that make those decisions within the local community. And so from that standpoint, I feel that people should go out and vote. At least vote in the local yeah. area. Now, I'm, I'm, nationally, yes, but find out who's going to be the judge, who's going to who's going to deal with the zoning commission, who's going to do all these things that would affect your life. Because we're looking at the grocery store, only one grocery store in the community, four miles away, another grocery store. Right. Yes, and another thing for we as a people, we not we need to start writing and doing things before things happen. You know, where's that? Where's that other grocery store that we need? We mm -hmm. have to. Building, we want another one. We we refuse right. not to have it. I think sometimes we wait to wait until something major happened, and then we get relaxed again, right? Mm -hmm. Where where are the letters? Where are the meetings in the community to say when pe few people get together they have power? True. So we're not stand for this now. You know, the older lady now she has to find out how she was going to get a grocery from the dollar store from Seven mm Eleven. -hmm. Take an Uber four mm -hmm. miles away. Every day, yeah. right? Sorry, I'm getting a little carried away because it's like it's, it's, it's part of it. It just makes me so angry, and I don't want to be angry. I'm so concerned about all of our communities. Is that don't wait until things like this happen. People right. are dead. They are dead. They are dead in Texas. They are dead in New York, Buffalo, New York. Are dead, and we've experienced it over and over again. I just thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, any, any, uh, Mr. Ronnie, anything that you want to leave us that really from your soul, from your soul, 
because you were going to the grocery store and God said, oh, hold it. This is not your time right now. Stay away. I don't want you to go right now. Hmm. I think I said it best. If I didn't say it, just to God be the glory. Mm -hmm. God yes. be the glory. And thank you. And, and Tyrese, um, Tyrese how, what about you? Um, uh, to thinking. all the 21 year olds, all the young people, all the millennials, yeah, what, what, so what message you can leave with them right now about what's, what you're going through, the feeling that, that you have and what you saw in Buffalo, New York? What can you leave with us? I've been thinking about this for a while. Um, no matter how angry you know, we are as a community, uh, I don't think violence is the answer. I mean, an eye for eye makes the world, whole world blind. You know, we go kill 10 white people because they kill 10 of our black people. It's just going to be a never ending bloodshed. Um, no matter how mad we are, because I heard you said you were angry. You know, I'm angry too, but I mean, I got, I got white friends. I got friends of every different race. I can't go on and say I hate them all because of what one individual did. It's, it's not fair uh, because of what, what, uh, what one individual did to us. Um, you know, I've understood, I've talked to some people, some black people, and you know, like I've asked them, like, are you on a Martin Luther King standpoint? Are you on a Malcolm X standpoint? And they're like, you know, well, now I'm on the Malcolm standpoint. Cause we've been doing um, Martin for so long. You know, when is stuff going to change? You know, I understand what they're saying. I empathize with them, but I also know what the repercussion of acting like more violent is going to do. I mean, I'm thinking about what I read that that guy's manifesto before he did it in Buffalo, before he shot this Buffalo and how he said all these terrible things about black people. I mean, he said that we're like, you know, way more aggressive than any other race. If we went out there and we acted and we, you know, rioted in the city and we, you know, burned places down. I mean, unfortunately we're doing nothing but proving his point. It may not be true, but we're proving his point. Not, 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 not only to him, but like to any other white people that feel the same way about us. It's all about how we um, can grow as a community, grow as a people, and change and become one. Mm -hmm. And I know it's going to be fine, but I mean, they. I, I agree with you. And I, and I change when I say angry, I change to another word really fast because anger is not of God. You know, it's that you, when you get angry, you don't control yourself. But you said something earlier about. Um, it, it's like, I think maybe, maybe indirectly said it be smart having the wisdom, thinking, think, and think, yeah. and think, and, 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 and getting, and also, also with Blacks, is to love one another. Yeah. To love, yeah. love yourself and love one another because that's power in itself right there. Yes. So some people think they can come into the Black community because, oh, they don't love each other. They do everything with each other. No, no, we need to start respecting one another and loving one another. Yes. Truly loving one another. And that to me is so significant. Yes. Yeah. So we thank you. We thank, thank you so you much. Thank I guess I can talk all day with you, with you all. And thank you all for taking the time going through this, um, just these moments right now, these hours, days. Mm -hmm. So much. Uh, Mr. Ronnie, thank you so much. Um, thank you. And Therese Nelson. Brandy C. Wells with uh, Will Jr. from Buffalo, New York. Uh, for our listeners, we know, we know we keep saying it. We got to pray. We got to pray. We got to pray. But once we pray, we got to listen to God. Speak to us. Speak to us. And God is talking to us all the time, telling us what we should do. We got to start listening. And we thank you. May God bless you.